we should commence this module by studying about the harmonization of accounting practices. Harmonization of accounts is the need of the hour. In simple terms, it means that if two organizations operate in various countries have exactly same transactions, then the final results for both the organizations should be identical. This can only be achieved when the principles and procedures applied for measuring income are same. That is, there is harmonization of accounting standards. As the world is becoming a global market with no political borders, both for goods and services and capital. Global firms are operating through many locations besides its home country. But due to separate accounting standards and procedures which act as a deterrent for these firms, there is a need for harmonization of accounting practices with no further delay. In advance, we should know what standards the accounting has been made which are. Accounting standards are the authoritative statements of best accounting practices which are supplied by a recognized accountancy body of experts concerning many features of quantities, treatments and disclosures of transactions and events of accounting associated to generally accepted accounting principles gap codification. These are quantified to be the norms of accounting policies and practices in the manner of codes or rules to direct the way that these items that are making up these financial statements should be dealt within accounts and are to be shown in the annual accounts. In reality, these accounts are considered and recommended for improvement and scale the value of financial reporting. They carry about consistency in the data published by enterprises, their financial reporting and ensuring consistency and comparability. These have intended for providing information that is useful to diverse users of the financial declarations, such as that of the shareholders, creditors, lenders, management, investors, suppliers, competitors, researchers, regulatory bodies, and society at large. From the observations from our last module, accounting information system is a system which collects, process, and transmits information to the users and then users make informed judgments found on this information. Now, if information is not relevant for not understandable, that may be as it is being measured, which indeed as the standards and principles applied while measuring. If such instances take place, then the entire purpose of accounting is being defeated. Now, as we are aware that some users of accounting may be from other countries where the standards of accounting are different from the country where accounts are being written, that's why we desperately are having a need to harmonize standards so that the information remains relevant for all the users despite their nationality. Thus, this harmonization process gives the global community a single entity. For instance, the diversity of stockholding doesn't matter today if the accounting system can generate common purpose of these financial statements in their real sense. This is how along the side with the process of globalization, the preparedness of investors in capital market has amplified and the number of investors are multiplying. Foreign institution investors FIIs have been investing in importantly the volume globally. So are several Indian companies as well through GDRs, Global Depository Receipts and ADRs, American Depository Receipts. Hence, the necessity for coordination of accounting standards is being strongly encouraged globally to make the economic decision-making process even faster. After studying this module, you shall be able to know what harmonization of accounts is, learn what the rationale behind harmonization is, know the process of harmonization, know about the status of harmonization. Let us now discuss the rationale behind harmonization of accounting standards. 
we already have an idea about the importance of harmonization of accounting standard. We need more reasons and shall try to find out more reasons why it is beneficial. Allowing the profits from economy globally has to be fully realized. It has been contended that the accounting policy amongst nations should be standardized. Thus, the world economy will need the process of harmonization of accounting standards in the following ways. Standardizing information of accounting can be given to worldwide economic policy makers. Through harmonized standards, the objective of standard information could be achieved as the understanding of the information will remain same no matter where it is being interpreted. The speedy progress of international trade and internationalization of firms, the advances in new communication technologies and the emergence of international competitive forces that is disturbing the financial environment at large. Under this worldwide scenario of business, the users in foreign country are badly in need of a common accounting language that should be spoken by all the firms across the globe. A financial reporting system of global standard is a prerequisite for attracting home the foreign investors which can be achieved through the accounting standards at convergence. With the absence of harmonization in accounting standards along with the added cost of financial reporting with the difficulties that multinational groups face in a way that they undertake transactions becomes critical. It is possible that in these transactions to gain under one accounting standard, whereas it may require a rescheduling under another standard. Thus, multinationals working in both the US and the UK face a good deal of trouble to prepare consolidated financial statements. Whenever a MNC has to report according to the standards of the countries, it may lead to some very unusual results. For example, Daimler Baines, the first German to have secured a stock market listing in the United States, it was reported a net profit of DM 158 million for a period of six months till June 1998 based on German GAAP. The US GAAP reconciliation statement has revealed that the company had suffered a loss of DM 949 million. For example, British Telecom Inc. reported that it has a profit of 1769 pounds for the year that had ended on 31st March 1994 under the UK cap but under the US cap reconciliation where the net profit was reduced to 1476 pounds. Harmonization is not an end by itself but it is also a means to an end. Acceptance of dissimilar accounting standards roots complications in making relative evaluation of performance of companies. This phenomena hinders the valuation and consequently the decision making process. There are uh, several instances in India and globally a bad accounting practices leading to corporate failures. These corporations demand non-recurrence of another Enron and like. Another important advantage that is anticipated to accumulate from global union of accounting standards relates to the cross-border mergers and acquisition facilitation. To sum it up, it improves the quality of financial reporting throughout the globe. Now let us discuss how harmonization of accounting standards is being done. The harmonization of the accounting practices will need common accounting standards which are followed throughout the globe. But now the question is how these global standards will be formed. For this, there is a special body called International Accounting Standard Board IASB. The International Accounting Standard Committee, now International Accounting Standard Board has come into existence as a result of an agreement by 16 accounting bodies that is representing 9 nations which are Canada, Mexico, France, Japan, Australia, Germany, Netherlands, the United States of America and the United Kingdom on 29 June 1973 with its secretariat and headquarters at London. Currently, IASC has 153 
accounting bodies representing 112 countries. It has issued 41 standards so far in order to harmonize the varied accounting standards and policies in different countries at present in use. Bearing Canada, Japan and the US, all countries have accepted these standards. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD has permitted a code of conduct for multinational enterprises for harmonization of national and international bodies. The UN Commission on Transnational Corporation made efforts to create disclosure standards for multinational corporation operating in the third world countries. The Accountants International Study Group AISG publishes 15 comparative studies in order to harmonize financial accounting practices. The International Federation of Stock Exchanges has recommended that its members make compliance with the IASC accounting standards as a condition for listing stock. These are undoubtedly some milestones on the way of harmonization. We shall now discuss about the harmonization process in India. What is being done till now? Accounting standards in India are issued by Accounting Standard Board ASB of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and are largely based on IFRS. With the opening of Indian economy in near past, the convergence to IFRS has become unavoidable. Keeping this in view, ASP decided to form an IFRS task force in August 2006. Based on the recommendation of this task force, the Council of ICI in its 267th meeting decided to fully converge with IFRS from the accounting periods commencing on or after 1st April 2011. At initial stage, this convergence was mandatory for listed and other public interest entities like banks, insurance companies, NBFCs and large-sized organizations with high turnover or annual income. Unfortunately, this deadline could not be met. What's new? The Ministry of Corporate Affairs has finally notified the much-awaited Indian accounting standards, which are converged with international financial reporting standards. The announcement of this IFRS converged standards fills up significant gaps that exist in the existing accounting supervision. And India can now assert to have financial reporting standards that are existing and virtually at par with the leading global standards. This will in turn expand India's place in global rankings on corporate governance and transparency in financial reporting. In total, there are now 39 Indian accounting standards. Now, we will discuss the harmonization efforts in other countries. The present world situation on the subject of harmonization gets going on 12 March 2002 when the EU Commission directed all European companies trading in the European securities market to adopt IAAS in 2005 and all non-European countries following US CAP or any other standards up to 2007. In June 2004, the Australian Accounting Standard Board had issued standards and clarifications that all accounting standards of Australia that are equivalent to international financial reporting standards must be accepted from 2005 in their country. Many countries like Korea, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Zimbabwe, Mongolia, Malta and Uganda are adopting IAS. The information about accounting principles are applicable in Syria and Tunisia indicates that they are similar to international accounting standards. At present, all companies and banks in Russia are required to prepare their financial statements in accordance with IAS. New Zealand's Accounting Standards Review Board and Financial Reporting Standards Board have adopted 36 new accounting standards and 12 interpretations in January 2005. 
and these form New Zealand's equivalent of the international financial reporting standards. It is going to incorporate IASP standards with effect from 1st January 2007. Hong Kong is a significant international financial hub. Its stock market is among the second largest in Asia and eighth largest in the world in terms of market capitalization. The Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants, the standard setting body of Hong Kong has been pursuing the strategy of aligning its standards with IAS since the early 1990s. HKI CPA has further committed time and resources to support convergence. Philippines have also implemented national standards that are identical to IFRS from 2005. Singapore has adopted many accounting standards from IFRS that principally word for word. Now, these are known as Singapore's equivalents of IFRS. Japan, the chief player in the global capital market and the second biggest capital market in the world is a strong supporter of IASP. The Japanese Institute of Certified Public Accountants is now working in association with the IASP to make the Japanese standards fundamentally equivalent to international standards. Japan too has undertaken a joint project in collaboration with IASP to remove the differences between Japanese accounting standards and IFRS by January 2005. The Canadian Accounting Standard Board has also declared its intention to adopt international financial reporting standards. Canada's decision to adopt IFRS means that out of original G4 nations, US is the only participant that has not gone over to international standards. In Egypt, Egyptian accounting standards have prepared to comply with international accounting standards except for certain minor differences to adapt to Egyptian economic environment. Therefore, every company listed in the Cairo stock exchanges must follow IAS. Kuwait adopted IAS as its national standards. Therefore, all Kuwaiti companies follow IAS for the purpose of listing. All companies in Jordan, both domestic and foreign listed in the Amman stock exchange must follow IAS. However, in Turkey, foreign companies may choose to follow any of the three standards such as international accounting standards, UK GAAP and US GAAP for listing in Istanbul stock exchange. In the Middle East, most of the countries have welcomed IAS. For cases in point, Bahrain, Qatar, Lebanon and Oman are considering IAS as a replacement to their domestic standards. Of course, Iran and Israel had shown reluctance for the use of IAS. In Iran, all companies to be listed in Iranian stock exchange must follow Iranian accounting principles. Similarly, all companies must follow Iranian accounting principles if they want to be listed in Tel Alive stock exchange. On January 1, 2007, more than 1100 Chinese companies switched to new accounting standards that brought their books in line with international norms. From 2008, the companies will have to apply a new set of 38 standards. Under the China accounting standard system that are basically in line with IASP norms. But there is far more at stake than to improve accounting practices at China's listed firms. Chinese companies are growingly looking overseas for funds and acquisitions. Adopting international standards will make this easier by increasing their transparency and credibility. In Bangladesh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Bangladesh set standards for the country through its technical and research committee. Till date, it has adopted all 8 IFRS and 26 IAS. In terms of standards, the gap between IAS and the standards as followed in Bangladesh is insignificant though some national laws give contradictory prescription in single situation. Another milestone reached by Bangladesh is the enactment of the Financial Reporting Act 2008 to regulate financial reporting activities and at the same time 
to the watchdog function of the accounting and auditing profession that will further strengthen the harmonization process. Moving on to what will happen if USA does not adopt IAS. Now it is understood that excluding a few, nearly all countries of the world are interested to follow IAS as their accounting standards. USA is the only main country unwilling to adopt it. Now question arises, what will happen if superpower of the world and a highly developed economy like USA does not adopt IAS? In a survey of chairmen across 145 European companies has found A. Over half of the chairmen of companies with US listings say they would consider delisting because of Sarbanes-Oxley in spite of the difficulties in taking shares of the US exchanges. B. 70% of those heading companies are not yet listed in the US said Sarbanes-Oxley would dissuade them from seeking a US listing. With the comparatively tighter regulation in the US, numerous large companies are understood to be assessing other capital markets that accept IFRS. Whereas such circumstances offer an opportunity for IFRS to flourish, it will still be inappropriate to stay limited to that outlook. This is due to the fact that IFRS stands a fair chance on its own with its acceptance by EU and also given the fact that many countries have conventionally followed IFRS or IFRS inspired national accounting standards. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned so far. Many of the early obstacles in the process of harmonization have been overcome and much progress towards conjunction of accounting principles and measures among countries has already been achieved. Convergence initiatives are now working much more effectively than ever before. Differences are still there but they are contracting. It is anticipated that the speed of growth in the sphere of convergence will accelerate further in the years to come. In Indian viewpoint, it will continue to adopt IAS, IFRS in the near future with few alterations to serve to the requirements of local environment. Setting IFRS under new governing framework is also a remarkable achievement in harmonization. IAS allows some alternative practices that have been abridged in IFRS to make the remedy common to all so that following identical standards cannot generate varying practices. We accept that this method will eventually set new standard for attaining harmonization in both national and international level. Thank you.